here we have L.A. Marzulli, who is an author, a radio show host, lecturer, and is also a biblical scholar and is one of the experts on the Nephilim, the children or offspring of the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. So, L.A., we're in a little museum in Peru, a little town called Andahuaylilas, and here we have this specimen called Waikiki. Could I have your thoughts as to what you think we're looking at? Well, I'd, I'd certainly be honored, and thank you for asking, Brian. Um, I'm no, certainly no expert on what I am seeing, but I will say this, that we know from the biblical account that fallen angels mated with the women of earth. We know that. And they did it also afterwards. And in my opinion, what we are looking at here might be a Nephilim. Now, the biblical account will say that the Nephilim were always giants, but that, that doesn't necessarily hold true. This is obviously uh, post-flood, post well after the flood of Noah, and what we see is the same type of genetic manipulation that these entities, I call them fallen angels, that these fallen angels engaged in. They are messing with the genome constantly. So in my opinion, when we look at the eyes, much, much larger, when we look at the lack of a nasal cavity, when we compare that to a human, totally different. When we look at the dimples in, in the lower jawbone, which is more robust than it should be for someone this size, the fontanella has not closed yet. Um, this is, this is an, a very anomalous skull. And from my paradigm, from my worldview, what I would say we are looking at is a hybrid, is some sort of a Nephilim hybrid. That's sort of the umbrella that, that um, covers the phenomena. Um, and I also believe that they are doing and engaging, when I say they, these, these angelic beings. And let me, let me clarify something. When we're talking angels, people get this idea of, of these little guys with wings fluttering around. Nothing could be further from the truth. These are extremely powerful entities. Uh, angel just simply means messenger. Um, we have biblical accounts of one angel showing up and, and basically wiping out 100,000 people or more. They're very, very powerful. They can manipulate matter and energy. So if there are fallen ones that have somehow rebelled, and how that all works, I'm not sure. No one really knows what the source of the rebellion is. But if it's true, and these angels have rebelled, then... Um, and they're messing with the genome. They're trying to create this hybrid, this half-angelic, half-human hybrid, which I would call Nephilim. This begs the question, what kind of power, what kind of abilities did this entity, this being have? Were they telepathic? Were they able to um, change matter and energy? See, we don't know the answers to this. And so this is certainly enigmatic. It's profound. And the fact that we're less than two feet away from it is sort of mind-blowing. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We, we have had a number of doctors, uh, nurses, and other medical professionals here, and what they more or less said is that they are very confused in that, as you said, the fontanelle, which is here, has not closed. That normally happens at about 14 months of age, but the teeth are that of at least a seven-year-old child. So that by itself confuses them. The other thing is that I have studied cranial deformation globally for a number of years now, and I can see no sign whatsoever cradle that there has been any cradle boarding or textiles or string wrapped around the head to alter the shape. It looks like it was born that way. Do you concur? Yeah, I, I really do. I don't see any evidence of, of uh, cradle deformation uh, due to cradle headboarding where they take, you know, material sticks or textiles, whatever, and wrap the head and create that, that, cone, that cone head shape. This seems to be um, perfectly shaped, and, and, and it just, it's, it's an amazing specimen, amazing sample of whatever these beings were. The fact that we're seeing more and more of them, if it was one skull, we'd all dismiss it. Well, you know, it's an, it's an anomaly. But what we see in the Paracas Museum and also here is this feature constantly being shown to us. And then it's emulated by, by the local people. Why is cranial deformation being emulated by, by the locals? What's the deal here? What are we looking at? Why, are they, why is this shape so desirable? To, to, so much so that we would take our infant and, and, and create... Uh, you know, bind the head up and try to create that shape. Why is this shape here, and why are the native people emulating it? Of course, this is the mystery. I believe these entities had some sort of telepathic 
uh, communication, uh, perhaps, and maybe perhaps a way of um, doing things that to normal human beings would seem miraculous to us. In other words, let me just give one biblical example. When, when Peter is in jail, an angel appears to Peter, and, and, and the angel just appears in the room. So he's come in from another dimension, and he's in a jail cell. Peter is chained to a wall. Peter's, Peter's mind sort of gets, it gets a little cloudy. He's not sure, am I awake or am I asleep? What's going on here? And um, Peter is chained, and all of a sudden the chains just drop. There's no manipulation with keys or locks. The chains just fall off of Peter. The door cell opens by itself. All the Roman guards are switched off. They're all sleeping, according to the testimony of Peter. Roman guards knew that if they were asleep at their post, that's instant execution. So they're not doing that. Um, something has switched off the guards. They walk out to the courtyard. This very large prison gate opens of its own accord. The angel then escorts Peter out and then disappears. And so we're looking at here is the miraculous. We're looking at the supernatural. It's, it's, to us, it's like, how did he do that? But this angelic being is manipulating matter, matter, energy, time, and space in ways that human beings cannot do and, and frankly, do not know how to do. It's on the quantum level. And I find that startling, sobering, and it may be the answer to this entire area uh, of the, with, with the megalithic stones, how they were moved, how they were shaped. It's certainly a viable theory that uh, extra not extraterrestrial, but interdimensional beings known as angels were actually here. And of course, these were not the good guys. These were the fallen ones. And they were setting up some kind of a grid. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Thank you, Elaine.